Welcome back, folks, to Free My Pain Now with Dr. Matt DeDuro. It's episode 28. Very excited that you guys have kept me on this long. I appreciate it, Samuel. Today, I have a really a legend and a mentor um, to me, Dr. Frank Schallenberger, who is really the father of ozone therapy here in the United States. And um, as I showed you earlier, Frank, I, I carry this book around with me when I travel. I'm constantly, re I've read it probably three or four times. I've, I've read and taken notes all over it. So I really appreciate you coming on. I know you're on vacation in, Van in Cancun right now. So thank you so much. Uh, glad to be here with you, Matt. So a couple things. I mean, Doc, you guys, you found this technology. Your dad was a medical doctor. You, you were helping him clean out some stuff. You found some of these old books 30, 35 years ago, correct? And it really, I mean, you're a medical doctor by trade. And I think, tell us how you came around to really embracing this, this therapy. Well, you know, uh, it didn't take me too long. In initially, uh, after graduating in 1973, um, I went to emergency medicine, and I did that for about five or six years, and after a while, decided to transition into private practice. It took me about six months to figure out that, uh, uh, to see a lot of the limitations of conventional medicine as it's practiced here in the U.S. Um, and one of the limitations is, you know, we, we don't treat causes as a rule, you know? And then the other limitation is uh, what we do treat with is drugs, and drugs have lots of side effects. And after a while, it occurred to me, you know, there maybe there's a better way. And kind of what you were talking about uh, is I'm looking through some of my dad's old books, which are from the 20s and 30s. And it was a real eye opener because I didn't realize it, but by back then they were into diets and uh, vitamins and minerals and organic uh, molecules. And, and that was, you know, pre-FDA for the most part. And, uh, it's, uh, and, and that just got me, turned me around. It said, you know, let's, let's start looking at, at, at causes. Let's see what we can do to actually fix the disease instead of just covering it up with drugs that end up giving me more side effects and more problems anyway. You know, getting to the root cause. You, yeah. you, you run one of the largest uh, anti-aging clinics in the country. You're out in Car Carson City, Nevada. I was lucky enough to visit your facility. I don't even know how old you are. I mean, you look great. Uh, is, I think you're 72 now, 71? I'm uh, 73 now. All right, looking good. Um, you know, one of the things you said that, and I, and I, I quote a lot from your book because I, I like it. I think you, you brought this technology to the States in a lot of ways, and you brought it, I won't say mainstream, but it's, it's getting there and it's reaching that tipping point. But uh, you, you, came across a lot of obstacles along the way and, and medical doctors and other peers probably that didn't really understand this technology. And I think, I think there's a couple different ways to, to do ozone therapy. One that can be a little less advantageous. Can you tell what's different about your therapy and how you train these hundreds and thousands of doctors around the clinic, around the world? Well, you know, um, basically ozone's a, a signaling molecule. It's a gas. And uh, the human body makes gases. It's interesting, huh? Uh, but our our uh, our immune system, when it's when it's under when it's uh, under attack, and uh, we're fighting off bacteria or viruses or whatever, um, they, our immune cells secrete ozone as a gas to stimulate the way the antibodies work. Uh, that was first discovered at Scripps almost 15, 20 years ago. Before then, we really didn't know that it did that. But we realized it did something because uh, you know, chronic infections uh, respond very quickly to ozone therapy. Uh, another signaling gas that uh, you know, listeners will, will probably know about is nitric oxide. There's a number of these signaling gases in the human body. And what they do is pretty remarkable. They send out signals to all kinds of different systems. Uh, and we're talking immune systems, nervous systems, endocrine systems, detoxification systems, just about anything that goes on in the human body basically is going to be signaled by ozone. And so we can use that. We can harness that. You just make ozone, you make it, uh, you know, it's basically for the listeners who don't know, ozone is three oxygen atoms 
as opposed to regular oxygen, which is two oxygen atoms. And it's that third oxygen atom that gives the signal. If I were to just treat a patient with two oxygen atoms, or O2, uh, nothing much is gonna happen. It just, it's good and it's nice, but it doesn't do any signaling. I put O3, so I'm gonna take O2, or uh, at, you know, I'm gonna go buy that in a tank, run it through a generator, and in that we'll generate O3. And then we can do lots of things with that O3. What I love most about reading some of your books is that you went around and you talked to specialists in, in pain management. You'd always ask them, where does pain come from? Right? Yeah, and and, exactly. and no, everybody gave a different answer. But you would say, well, I don't know where it comes from. But I know when I put ozone in it, the pain goes away. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm a doctor. And, uh-huh. uh, you know, I, I like to know how things work. But that's not my job. My job is just to find things that do work. And Mm -hmm. this is one of them. You know, you're, you also talk about, you know, I was lucky enough to not only get to visit your clinic, but also bring the TRT, the tissue regeneration technology and get to use it on you, Miss Judy. I think one of your nurses, Matt um, Nelson. And, you know, you said something to me. You've you've had some chronic back issues, and you ha- you went down the hallway and back, and I have you on video, and you said, "Wow, I'm about 75, 80 percent better after you know, not that it lasts forever, but after that one treatment." And I saw in your and you were like, "How does this work? What? Why don't I know more about this?" And and, and it's the same thing with ozone therapy. Why are effective, efficient, cost-effective, efficient therapies? Why are they bottom shelved here? In, in in our industry, what in this in this healthcare system? It, you know, it's it's a, it's a stacked uh, it's a stacked deck. Basically, we have a system here that works really well for the powers that be. Uh, doesn't work really well for the end user necessarily, but uh, you know, for the people that are making money, I'm basically talking big medicine, big pharma, that whole group, big hospital, the whole big thing. All of that stuff. I mean, that's a system that's generating everybody that runs that system a lot of profits. And here's going to come along something like ozone therapy, which is going to chip into those profits. And just nobody's going to be interested in that. That's just the way it is. Like you say, it's unpatented, right? And it's unpatented. You can't do. Uh, you can't. You can't really make any money off it. It's just a service provider sort of thing. Matt. It doesn't cost anything to make ozone. Right. Uh, and uh, so it's just, you know, it's just important to people who want to help their patients. That's all. It's, it's not a big money maker in that way. I was surprised, and, and correct me on my, my numbers, but did you say that 70% of your patients have Lyme's disease? Or is there a huge number that are coming to, to work with you because of that? Can you explain why? Yeah, I don't want to say that necessarily, but I do get a Lyme disease. I get a lot of Lyme disease patients. My practice is basically, you know, one of those practices where, you know, it's a last resort type of practice. So pretty much most of the people I get, if they're a Lyme patient or a cancer, or whatever it is, you, they will have seen lots of other people, perhaps, and you know, just not gotten the results, and I, I end up with them. So the point is that I, as a rule, end up with the harder cases. They go a doctor after doctor after doctor. Um, and my listeners know my story. I had H. pylori um, undetected for nine months. That almost killed me. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and I, I think that people find you as, like you say, the last beach, the last area to go to. Um, and so tell us, you've got some great, we've got a couple of minutes here before our second segment. You've, uh, you're, you've been teaching doctors and clinicians for the last 20 years. Um, Mar- since, actually, since 1991. It's okay. been a long time. Wow. And it's the American Academy of Ozone Therapy. That's right. And you have um, a few different times a year you'll actually teach the clinicians how to use this technology. And then you'll have, so I think you have one at the end of February, beginning of March, that's going to be in Reno, Correct. Uh, that's right. So three times a year in Reno, mm-hmm. uh, we teach uh, doctors, naturopaths, dentists, veterinarians. We've got all these courses to to teach all these practitioners how to how to use this gas to help their patients. 
That's awesome. And then you'll have your national event that'll be, I believe, May 15th, 16th that weekend in Broomfield, Colorado. Yeah, it's, it's May 14 to 15. Okay. And uh, in, in this, this coming May and uh, in, uh, in Denver, the Denver area, yeah. flying to Denver, basically. That's it's right. going to be a great conference. We've got all kinds of really interesting things going on with this. Well, and so, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited because I, I do think that um, ozone therapy helps complement our, our TRT type of treatments. And we've got a, a few of your doctors out there that are implementing both. And I'm really excited to see. I, I, I think it kind of complements both of the technologies so well. Um, Phil Lanou is one of them. He's out in Spokane, Washington. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, every, every week I talk to him. He's doing some wonderful work. Um, well, it's, it's, I like the way you use that, that term compliments, because probably that's the single best message I like to tell practitioners is that whatever you're doing, whatever your method of treatment is, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could be a drug pusher, you could be a homeopathic, you could be an acupuncturist, it, you could be a cardiologist, it doesn't matter what you do. If you add this into what you do, it's going to be a lot better and you're going to like it. All right. So in our next segment, we'll chat a little bit more about oxidative stresses and oxygen utilization. Thanks. Welcome back, folks, to Free My Pain Now with Dr. Matt DeDuro. And via, sidel- via satellite today is Dr. Frank Schallenberger, MD. Um, you're president of uh, American Academy of Ozone Therapy, is that correct? That's right, yeah. So, wonderful. We talked about some of your upcoming conferences. Um, like, I-, I love the way you talk about how we, every birthday, our mitochondria will get a little weaker. And for some of our listeners out there, they might remember from 10th grade, the mitochondria are the powerhouse to our cells, right? They create ATP and they create energy for our body to replicate and regenerate and repair itself. What is, what is the true sign of aging, Doc? How can, you, how can you talk to us about that? Well, I think people know that as you get older, you get weaker, you get more frail, eventually you uh, you become more susceptible to diseases and that's what we call aging that entire sequence of events that happens even though it is associated with getting older um, the reason behind it is 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 really quite simple it has to do with what you just said the mitochondria and the fact is that uh, the mitochondrial function in our cells declines with each birthday now, that's the bad news. Eventually, it declines so much you die, and, uh, essentially. But before it starts declining and you die, there's this bad period of time in there where you're not quite alive and you're not quite dead, and that's where we want to avoid that. We don't want to do that. So the, so the way you can get around this is to resuscitate these mitochondria, make it perform at a younger level, and that will dramatically slow down this period of deterioration that you know, we just call it aging. Well, that's awesome. Is and at your clinic, you have specific ways of yeah. testing that the way how efficient we are at utilizing oxygen. That's exactly right, because that's what mitochondria do. All that oxygen we breathe in, it only does one thing, right? It gets processed by the mitochondria that produces energy that keeps us alive, and in a sense. Uh, you know, we're just like clock radios. You know, we need the juice. We need the energy to keep working well. If you start turning down the juice to a clock radio, it's it's not going to work very well. And I, that's what, what yeah. happens to us. I tell my listeners, you know, you can go 30 days without food. You can go three mm-hmm. days without water. <laughs> you, you can go three minutes without oxygen, but you can't go a second without electrical impulse going through your body, right? How do we really look at it? when we're hooked up in a hospital, they've got the little uh, EKG beep, beep, beep. That's when there's no sign of electrical activity. So uh-huh. you've, you you know, you're a, the, one of the original biohackers out there. I mean, when people look you up, that's, that's really what you've done. And yeah. I mean, you've utilized it on yourself and your family, I'm sure first. Uh, 
I hear some wonderful stories. How do how do our patients reach you? How do our patients or a practitioner that does a similar type of work that you? Well, let me give you a couple of uh, websites that they can go to learn more about these things. Uh, is in terms of my clinic and what we do at our clinic, uh, which is, you know, Matt, is a broad-based clinic. But in terms of that, they can go to my website, which is really easy to remember. It's antiagingmedicine.com, antiagingmedicine.com. And then to learn more about how ozone can participate in that and can also do other things, uh, they can go to the Academy website, which is AAOT, American Academy of Ozone Therapy, AAOT.us. And mm -hmm. there's lots of information there. And as you pointed out, too, they could go to Amazon, Google my name, and I've got several books, well, a bunch of books that I've written, but several of them are on just exactly ozone therapy. You can learn a lot just by looking at these things. That's excellent. And, you know, I've, I started watching you more on some YouTube, some great interviews you did. I, I really enjoyed those. You know, um, we talked a little bit about, you know, big pharma. Uh, one of the things I was really shocked about, because my whole life I thought, wow, we have the strictest guidelines for the FDA and they're so hard to do, you know, these research and double blind studies. You know, for every dollar spent on research, pharmaceutical companies now spend $19 on marketing to tell you, you know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah. it's just, it's kind of crazy how we've allowed that. And there's only two countries in the world that allow this type of marketing. It's New Zealand and the United States, both of which have the highest healthcare costs in the world. I mean, we're suffering, Why? right? We're suffering from the worst opioid epidemic in our country's history. What, what do you, what are some things, I mean, you've been in healthcare for now over 30 years. What, what, what would you say? What would you, if, if President Trump is listening, which he may be signing into this, who knows? He, he likes my oh, that'd show. That'd be great. That'd be great. Uh, you know, people have to understand, do not rely on our medical system. Just don't do it. Take control of your life. Be responsible. Uh, don't, you know, get sick someday and say, oh, you know, I don't know how I got sick. I have no idea. Don't do that. There are certain things that we can do uh, that can keep. I, mean, I have patients in their 80s, uh, even late 80s, that are riding bicycles up mountain hit passes. I mean, there's just and, and, and you, this doesn't happen accidentally. You're not going to achieve that accidentally. You got to go out and take the reins take control, do your due diligence, just like you would anything else. And people just need to realize that it's possible. If they realize it was possible, they probably, more people probably do it. I think a lot of people out there say, you know, getting sick, getting frail, getting feeble, getting fat, all that stuff is just, you know, it's bound to happen to me. So, you know, there's nothing I can get away with. No, no way I can avoid that, which is just, that's just not true. We can totally avoid these things and have a much better quality of life while we're at it. You touched on the reason why I started this show is I wanted our listeners and our patients to really become their own healthcare advocates. They have mm -hmm. to become their own <laughs> experts in their condition and build a team of wonderful doctors. And, and they're not all going to be in your backyard. You've got to find them like, like we found you and, um, it, it's well worth it. So, you know, I think that's really good words to live by. And, uh, and obviously your, your proof, your living proof of it, you look great and you're active still and work hard. I couldn't even chase you around that day uh, <laughs> when I was in your office. Um, you know, I was, funny. I was just reading one of Hippocrates books yesterday while I was sitting on the beach. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting. We're talking about, you know, 500 years before Christ and Hippocrates is saying, if your doctor is in bad shape, go see another doctor. I'm not kidding you. He says in his writings, he's <laughs> chastising his doctors, stay in good shape because we don't want your patients to be seeing you looking so crummy. Well, you know, Doc, it's one of my it's one of my missions in life to highlight wonderful doctors that are out there in, in, in this country doing groundbreaking work. And, you know, um I'm, I I remember I Three years ago, when I first came across tissue regeneration technology, and I flew all the way out to Seattle, Washington, to meet with these very influential doctors, and and they looked at it and they said, "Young man, you're swimming upstream. This is this is you're not going to be. This is not going to be easy." And I've really looked at 
the way you and the longevity resources have, have how you guys have partnered and really built a, a platform for educating doctors and the patients out there for other options. Um, how, how has that worked? We've got a two and a half minutes. How, how has that worked? Those guys have, have been really good for you, right? They're the ones that make the ozone generators. Yeah. Longevity resources is, you know, it's a company based out of uh, Vancouver, Canada, and they make all pretty much all the supplies. They produce all the supplies that practitioners need to use uh, in the various applications of ozone for their patients. And I've known these guys for a long time. And uh, so we've just, it's, it was a kind of a natural combination. And I'm, I, they have all the stuff that, that we need to do the job. Uh, I have the information on how to do the job. So it's just a natural marriage there. I'm excited that there's veterinarians that are using this technology the biological dentists. I mean, I think that's mm -hmm. huge. I'm as I'm learning more about mercury and and, and chronic infections. Um, I think that every family should have a biological dentist that they could work with as well. Absolutely. You know, I I uh, I live three and a half hours from a biological dentist, and I don't have one close to me, unfortunately, at least not yet. Uh, but you know, there's no way then I'm just going to, you know, save time by going to my local guy. If I have any kind of significant process other than like cleaning, inspection, you know, x-rays or that kind of thing. If there's something important needs to go on like an implant or tooth extraction or an infection or anything like that, there's no way I'm going to see a dentist that doesn't know how to do ozone. That just doesn't make sense to me. That's great. That's awesome. Um, and, and we're realizing that, that mercury can be the root source of a lot of these chronic infections and inflammation. Um, so, I mean, I, I want patients to go out and do their research on that. And there's, there's, there's definitely a, a specific way to, to have that removed. You know, um, Doc, in closing, we got about 40 seconds. Um, again, thank you for taking a chance uh, on, on us and also working with us and, and, and taking time out of your busy vacation with your family. And, and please thank your family for us. Uh, any closing thoughts? Uh, yes, closing thoughts. Uh, just, uh, I just hope ever. I hope all the listeners go and investigate this. Ozone's incredibly good at so many things: immune system stimulation, fighting chronic infections that otherwise are not. You can't beat them until you add ozone in a lot of them. Uh, it's um, unbelievable for pain. Uh, it stimulates. Uh, uh, the detoxification system. So if people are toxic, it improves your mitochondrial function. Now, you know, somebody listening to me probably says, oh, the guy's a snake oil salesman. And, and I admit it's a little hard to believe, but I hope they will do their due diligence and do a little investigating. And if nothing else, buy my book, The Principle and Applications of Ozone Therapy. Take a look at it, uh, read it. I put a lot of science in there. There's a lot of science about this stuff. This is just not some, uh, you know, latest fad. It's unfortunate that most of the research has been done in Europe. Dr. Schallenberg, thank you again. It was really a pleasure. You have All a good right, evening. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great one.